I am Rohit from Talent Battle. Before starting with the coding question, let's have a look for assessment instructions provided by the InfiTQ. This will help you to avoid unnecessary confusion. So you have to code your solution in the code panel provided by the InfiTQ. While doing that, you can refer to the syntax under reference document section and using the sample input data provided with the question for testing the code is allowed. For testing more scenarios, you can use your own input data. You have to save the code before switching to another question. And to execute the code against a set of sample test cases, you have to run the code. While submitting each hands-on question individually for it to be considered for the final evaluation. And only run and save, do not submit your code for final evaluation. So you have to explicitly click on the submit button so that your code will be submitted for final evaluation. Let's move on to the problem statement that we will be going to discuss in this video. So this is the problem statement that we will be discussing. Given a non-empty string containing only digits. Okay. So what is given in this problem statement? We have given with a non-empty string which will contain only digits. What we have to do, we have to write a program to return an array. So we will be returning an array as an output based on the below logic, right? So what are the logic statements they have been provided? The first one, identify all possible substrings of digits, which are pronic numbers. So we have to identify all the possible substrings of a digits, which are pronic number. Okay. So we have to see what exactly a pronic number is, then store the identified pronic number by arranging them in ascending order and removing the duplicates if any. And the third logic statement is if no pronic numbers can be identified, then you have to return minus one or an empty array. And the note is also given that zero is not considered as a pronic number. Okay. So according to this logic statements, we have to generate a program in Python that will return an array based on the given identified logic statement. The sample input and output is also given. So we'll first see the logic of this program and then we will move to the actual code execution. Now first start with the what are pronic numbers. So before solving this particular example, we need to first identify what exactly a pronic number is, right? So pronic number is the product of two consecutive numbers, right? And they are of the form n multiplied by n plus one. Say like, for example, if I'm representing 12, so 12 can be represented as three multiplied by four. So three is my n value and four becomes n plus one. And the product of these two will give me the pronic number, right? Similarly, two. 2 is also a pronic number because I can represent 2 as 1 multiplied by 2 where 1 is my n and 2 is n plus 1. So 2 consecutive numbers and the product of these 2 consecutive numbers will give me the pronic number, right? For example, if I take a non-pronic number, say for example, uh, 36, right? So 36 can be represented as 6 multiplied by 6, right? So six and six are not two consecutive numbers. So that cannot be considered as a pronic number or otherwise I can represent 36 as nine into four or four into nine. So that is not again the consecutive numbers. Again, 12 multiplied by three. This is another representation. So all these are the possible values, but they are not satisfying the rule of product of two consecutive numbers. So that's why I can say this is not an pronic number. Okay. So now the first part of the problem statement that has been provided that you have to go with the identification of all possible substrings of the digits, right? So we will first target this particular part where we have to identify the substrings, right? Say for example, my number is 272. So what are the possible substrings that I can have? Say like 2, 7, 27, 72 and 272. And out of this, I have to identify the pronic numbers. Right. 
so what are the pranic numbers 2 is the pranic number after that 72 and 272 these three are my pranic numbers right because i can represent two we have already discussed it that two can be represented as 1 multiplied by 2 72 can be represented as 8 multiplied by 9 and similarly 272 right so in this way this 3 can be the pranic numbers right so you have to apply this logic now to identify the substrings what we will do we will have the identification of the numbers right 0 1 2 and we will utilize the range value for j or for i which will work on the length of particular string right length of string so this will be my input string i will be considering say for example this is my in string which is coming as an input this is my input string right and i will be applying the logic of uh, identification of substring by taking slice of my i to j plus 1 right up to this particular and i will be applying this on my input string right so this will give me the particular substring and i will store the result of this into the particular substring values and we have to work on the loop from a particular value of i that is from 0 to the entire length of the substring right that is 3 up to this particular example after that i will be storing all these results into a particular variable temporary and we have a second uh, logic uh, provided in the program statement that we need an sorted part of this array we have to arrange them in a ascending order so i will be using the sorted list right and uh, that will be like my temporary value whatever i have stored after performing the substring calculations i will be just utilizing them in a sorted manner and i will be displaying it also and in the third part of the program i will be utilizing the logic of pranic numbers right where i will be checking the entire elements which are ranging from 0 to as discussed square root of the element of number plus 1 right up to this particular statement where i will be taking the square root because the n value suppose the number that i am dealing with so square root of n multiply by square root of n plus 1 will give me the same number so that will be the logic that i will be applying to calculate this and simultaneously i will be storing the values which will return me the condition that if if my value multiply by value plus 1 and is equals to equals to the number that i am working on then i will be storing this into the result part okay and after the, at the end i will be displaying all this result part in the format array so that i will get the output like this 272 and 272 so these are the two three parts that we will be working on in the actual uh, program code so i hope you have understood the logic of identification of pronic numbers first we will work on the substrings then pronic number and then we will display the output Okay so let's move on to the final code execution in the code panel Okay so now here in the online compiler uh, code panel we will be writing down our code and we will be checking the output of this code as well okay so as discussed going one by one so we have an input string first so i will take an input string instr is equals to input so we'll take it from the user so i will just pass the message enter the value we will take a temporary uh, list set to empty first and then we have an output array as uh, provided in the problem statement okay that will be storing the result and then we will be utilizing it okay so first uh, part will be about the substring so i will take uh, for i in range from 0 to length of my input string okay i n s t r so this will give me the idea of the entire range the inner for loop from j in range of say i comma length of my input string 
okay so i hope you are getting this logic as what we have discussed on powerpoint after that i will calculate the substring by taking the slice part so substring is equals to integer my input string and from i to i colon j plus 1 okay so this will give me the slicing part and the substring values and i will be storing that adding that into the temp okay after that i will be just putting the sorted part of the list now i want to display this as well as provided in the output so i will be just displaying the part of this link substrings i can say comma temp so i will be just displaying the values now coming towards the logic of uh, pronic number say for example we take a number which is a part of substring right because if from that substring we have to identify the pronic number so for num in temp and i will be checking the values for the square root part so for value in range from 0 to as discussed square root and uh, this square root will give me double value so i have to make it to the integer so math dot square root of number plus 1 okay now as we have used the square root functionality i have to import the math file as well in my program so i will just modify the code and i will uh, have import math in my program okay so for this particular function so after that i will apply the logic of pronic number so if val multiply by val plus 1 and if it is equals to equals to the number that i am working on then i will be just putting this in my actual result so that is out r out array append it to that respective result okay and then after that i don't want to work with any other logic so my all logic flows will be considered so i will break out the loop and then i will just display the results okay so empty array can give me the condition where i can have the non pronic numbers if there are no pronic numbers in the substring value then i can have the empty array okay and that you can apply for uh, uh, this also minus 1 if you want to modify the program you can do that okay so now what uh, i have done here is i have just display the results what i have received from the logic of uh, pronic number so this is my entire code that i will be having for uh, pronic numbers identification provided in the problem statements so i will be just executing this and will check for the various inputs so first we will try for the sample input that has been provided in the problem statement so that was 9301256 so see you can check over here the substrings that can be generated for this number they have been represented here and after that out of that substring you can come up with the values of pronic numbers right so now there was a note mentioned in the uh, program that zero is not considered as a pronic number so we have to just slightly modify our condition of for at line number 17 so instead of taking from zero if i take it from 1 then you can have the elimination of this zero which is non pronic number okay so i will be just executing it again so for the input 9301256 i will get the substring and the zero is eliminated and out of this substring 2 6 12 30 56 and 930 are my pronic numbers and you can check all of them are even one okay so in this way you can execute it now we will check another input say for example it is a uh, consecutive one 1 2 3 4 5 6 So you will have the substrings first, and then you will have the pronic numbers that is two, six, twelve, and fifty-six from this particular number. Now we will check one input where the pronic numbers are not possible. So it is expected that you will get an empty array, 
substrings is possible but the pronic number array will be empty right so for example the input is 7135435 so you can see here the substrings are generated but the uh, pronic array is empty okay so it means that you can modify the code for representing minus 1 but this will work uh, as provided in the logic okay so this is the case that uh, my pronic number logic can be executed in python okay so i hope you have understood the final code and the logic that we have discussed about the pronic number as far as the problem statement is given so for further updates do not forget to subscribe our channel and also you can join our whatsapp and telegram group for off campus updates thank you